So isomorphism, what does this word even mean? This first part comes from a Greek word isos that means equal or the same. And the second part from another Greek root, morphe, which means shape. You might have also seen these words that start with the same word, isotope, isosceles, and isometric. Tope is from the Greek root topos, which means place or location. And this term is used for atoms with equal number of protons, which have the same place in the periodic table but different neutrons. In the next word, skelos means leg, and an isosceles triangle is a kind of triangle that have equal sides or legs. And also, metron means measure, and isometric refers to a transformation in geometry that preserves distance. In linear algebra, isomorphism is a structure preserving bijective mapping or transformation between two vectors showing that they have the same form or shape or identical structure even if they consist of different elements. So vectors are the elements of a structure we call a vector space and isomorphism is a bijective mapping which is a kind of transformation that maps a vector space to another one. Maybe with different elements but it preserves the structure. We show this mapping from a vector space V to another vector space W in this form. T is a linear mapping, and these two are our vector spaces on which the mapping occurs. One of the most important features that is preserved is linearity. And when we say the mapping preserves the structure, it means that under this mapping, the vector space remains linear. Also, it is bijective, meaning that for every element in W, there is one element in V. More formally, when we say it preserves the structure, first it means that if we map two vectors to the new vector space and add them, we will get the same result as mapping the addition of the two vectors, so the addition structure stays the same. Also, for every real number we choose, which are our scalars, the scaling process is the same and after mapping, vectors are still scaled by the same amount. Pay attention that our field can also be complex numbers or other fields. Talking about bijectivity, this expression formally shows the mapping is one-to-one, -one, meaning that for every vector in V, there is only one vector in W. And also this expression shows that the mapping is onto, meaning that for every vector in W, there exists a vector in W such that when mapped, gives the vector in W. I have thoroughly explained these two last expressions in the previous video. Now as an example, consider the space of all the square matrices in this form for which A, B, C and D are real numbers. Also consider these column matrices which are different elements because they are not square matrices but 4 by 1 matrices which are made up of 4 real numbers. If we add two of these square matrices, we get a new 2 by 2 matrix which is still a member of the same set. Because the elements of the matrix are still real numbers consisting of adding two real numbers. Also, we can easily scale each of these square matrices by multiplying a real number lambda. This setup, two by two square matrices, form a vector space which needs a vector addition and also a scalar multiplication. We can do the same thing for the second set of matrices. By adding them, we get another member of the same set. And pay attention that sets themselves are just a collection of elements. And when we define a relation between these elements, we are introducing a kind of dynamics within the set. Another dynamic we are introducing here is this scalar multiplication, which is like making the element in the set smaller or bigger, or in other words, scaling it. You can think of it as a perk being added to your abilities in a video game. So this second set of elements with these two perks is also a vector space. We can also write any member of the first vector space by adding scaled versions of these four specific square matrices, which are the members of the vector space themselves, or in other words, vectors of this vector space. Also the addition of the scaled versions of these four specific vectors, which are also linearly independent, can give us every vector in the second vector space, or in other words, can span the whole vector space. These four linearly independent square matrices are a set of basis vectors that can give us any vector we want in the vector space. And also, the second vector space can be spanned by these primed basis vectors. Pay attention that for both of these vector spaces, we have four basis vectors. 
So, we have two vector spaces V and W, for which the dimensions are both 4. Let me remind you that the dimension of a vector space is the number of vectors in any basis of the vector space. Pay attention that I say any basis, because basis vectors are not unique and any four linearly independent vectors in these two vector spaces can span the whole space and any fifth vector can be written as a linear combination of these four vectors and will be dependent on them. It is important to know that two finite dimensional vector spaces V and W are isomorphic if and only if they have the same dimension. This means that if the dimensions of the two vector spaces are equal, in other words, if they have the same number of basis vectors, then there exists an isomorphism between them that maps every element of one space uniquely to an element of the other, and vice versa. For example, complex numbers can form a vector space and we can write any complex number using a real part and also an imaginary part, so its dimension is 2. Complex numbers are isomorphic to 2D vectors shown by 2 by 1 column matrices and also polynomials of degree 1 or less, meaning that A and B in the polynomial can be any real number, including 0. We can also show these vector spaces using these four symbols. Also, these are some examples of four-dimensional vector spaces, 2 by 2 square matrices, four-dimensional column matrices, and also quaternions that have a real part and three imaginary parts and are usually used for describing 3D rotations are all isomorphic and share the same structures.